Hello and welcome to Tykes TV. Quite a bit to talk about this week, really. Uh, footballing matters and kind of stuff off at pitch as well. A bit of positive news regarding uh, some standing. So, Ryan Bearded Tyke, as always, a uh, pleasure you joining me, mate. Yes, well. Uh, we'll start off with a bit of good news first. Uh, from this fan advisory group, it's been announced on uh, socials and that, that club are actually pushing forward with the safe standing in a section at Pontian. Um What's your take on this? I mean, it's been, it's been, fans have been asking for it for quite a while, haven't they? There's been this bit of yeah. discontent with the stewards and standing issues. So, again, making grounds, possibly council as well, might be helping push this along. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I personally, I think it's great news, Neil. Uh, not just because I think we need safe standing, which we do, because it'll, it, it stops having to, the stewards having to fight with the fans and mm. arguing with the fans about who should be stood and who shouldn't and, and, and risk of sanctions from the league because we're breaking the you know breaking the rules with regards to standing. So I think that's a it's a great idea for that not, for that it'll help massively the atmosphere. But more importantly, the, the the club are listening to the fans and what what we want and the, and they've acted really swiftly straight as soon as this you know they've been scuppered really about uh, you know, until this deal with the council was announced. Mm. But literally within. You know, a couple of weeks of it being announced, we're we're, we're talking about the you know the plans have been submitted to get the uh, to get the say standing in. So it's, that's really really positive. That's a a massive step in the right direction for you know the, the the relationship between the club and the club listening to the fans and where the club can do things that, that they're going to listen to the fans and, and and get them done. So that's for me that's really positive. And and it's like that's what you said there. Uh, cl uh, cl you know, clubs took on board listening and the. What I like about this one as well is that they've actually communicated, they've put something out, they've made a, yeah. a statement and said, look, this is what we're doing, this is what we need to go through, obviously, the safety process uh, in conjunction with every, all other governing bodies. Um, so we started it, we started the motion to uh, take it forward. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's another ticket box for me, is that they actually communicated and said, look, rather than like say, oh, what's about this, we're standing, it's not, We've actually made a statement. Look, this is what we've done. This is what we're doing now. This is the process where we are at. And again, this is, I think, what's been lacking in the past, as in the club, like yeah. keeping us as fans informed. And yeah, we're not going to tell us everything. We're not going to be, but at least we've like communicated. Said, yeah, you know what? We've listened to what you've said, and this is what we are doing. This is where we are. So again, another another plus for me is that I'm hoping this can like steadily move on going forward, uh, Ryan. I I think the communication has been significantly better since Khalid left. Mm. It's been significantly better, noticeably better. You know, I think he just didn't want to share. I, I don't, I don't want to beat the beat the guy down, but you know, his communi communication under him was was really poor. It was everything we didn't even know anything, did we? And even when we had the meeting with him um, pre-season. One of the questions was about communication. They completely shut me down. Well, why should we tell you? Why we we, we don't want all that information out there? We give mm -hmm. this information. It's giving too much information out. So it's sort of like completely discredited it. What what what, what we're asking for, and it's just like no, I just we just want to be kept in the loop. We don't need to know absolutely everything. We just need to know what's you know. <laughs> we just like to know something and not be completely you know kept completely kept in the dark. So I think that's been noticeably different modes of communication. Um, and long may it continue. Yeah, I mean, it's like just going, you know, we're going to move on from this uh, standing part, but it's just like, like I said, you've, you've asked a question, you've listened to the fans, we've communicated back to you. And again, that'll sit well with a lot of fans not being just like rebuffed off. Like I said, under Khaled, sometimes it's a bit of an ego, a bit of, like, like you just said, yeah, we don't have to tell you everything when we've come up with ideas. Well, we didn't think we'd have to tell you about, we just do it again. It's a bit back like, I don't know. It, it seems to be a bit of like a, an attitude kind of thing. Whereas, like now, it seems to be a bit more communication. There's things in process. We're letting you know things, and and again, I just want to carry on. Yeah. Now then, we're going to come to this. We're going to touch on it briefly because I think a lot of it's we've just been on about it off air, Ryan. Uh, yeah. This is what's come out with the athletic. I mean, I don't know how reputable the athletic is. You know, I always see it on Twitter, but they're wanting, you know, to subscribe to this new letter and this other. And people, you know, unless you've been sleeping under a rock, it's all been on socials and that. About, and I'm going to be careful what I say here because it's a lot of allegations and stuff, but there's a, a female, well, there was a female employee, I think her name's Ellen. I'm just looking at some of the stuff I don't want to get, you know, uh, be done for libel or all. 
Yeah, just but, be careful. <laughs> yeah. Um, and apparently she's had a disagreement at club. I think it's safe to say. And yeah. there's been rumblings going off at club. For me, it's disappointing that something like this has been leaked out, uh, Ryan. Yeah. Um, I think in any business, you're going to have a, you know, an issue with an employer and an employee. You think it'd be done internally with HR, so for proper channels, and if need be, go to a tribunal. Been there, done that with yeah. different companies. Um, what's your take on this? And I, I know it's, I don't know, it seems a bit weird. No, it's been proven. No, it's been proven as well, has it? So no, nothing's I, been proven, and it's purely at the allegation stage now. So I think a lot of people have been like, when I was reading some of the stuff online, I was just flabbergasted by it because it was almost like it, well, it must be true. It's on the Athletic, and it must be. 100% true and Barnsley have been doing this and these owners have been doing that, X, Y, Z, all, like, all the usual stuff. Listen, it, 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 I think you're right, Neil. The most disappointing thing is that it's been leaked out, uh, you know, as just because sort of football, all football clubs still, like all businesses, come on, you know, have to adhere to employment law and, and things like that should be kept between the business and um, the and, and the employee, you, see, you know, if there are grievances, that should that information should not get out, and whatever reason it's got out, how true it is, I don't want to, I don't want to comment on it because it may well be true, and if it is true, then it needs to be dealt with a full investigation, you know, internal investigation, and dealt with accordingly. But just, just, just because it's a football club, we as fans don't shouldn't get to know that we shouldn't get to know what's going on because it's it's, an, it's between the employee and the employer, and it's and just because we're fans of a football club, it don't mean that we get to know that. So we shouldn't, that's that's the disappointing part. The rest of it, the rest of it that's in there and about the loan paperwork and everything else, it's just, I don't want to say hearsay because it's not, there could be some truth behind it. Who knows? We don't know. It's just, they're just allegations at this point. There's so, not been proven from the EFL or not yet. Yeah, there's, there's been no charge from the EFL yet. So when there's a charge from, if, if and when there's a charge from the EFL, then we can address it with the football club about that side of it, that part of the article from the Athletic. But at the moment, there isn't anything. So just leave it alone. Leave it alone. There's no need to be going on about it until you know it. It, it, it could be just like someone not someone and nothing, or just completely unproven, or hearsay, or it could be all sorts. There's all sorts of different reasons. It could actually be that we have breached um, um, the rules regarding the loan paperwork. But then it'll be addressed and dealt with. Then trying to address and deal with it before anything's actually happened is just it's just yeah. crazy. Just a lot of wasted energy on something that's. Not actually anything yet, with regard. Yeah. But with regards to Eleanor, you know, if she has been, uh, if she does feel that she's been mistreated, which she, she, she clearly does, then that should be dealt with by the football club privately and through the, you know, through relevant bodies, through, through yeah. employment law and through the correct procedures. And, and we as fans shouldn't know now, and we shouldn't get to know what the outcome is either, because we're not supposed to know. Mm. You know, if I if I have a, a grievance at work. My co-workers shouldn't find out, and I'd be really disappointed if they did. Yeah, you know that's that that's and, and it should be no different just because it's a football club. So that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. Yeah. I think we've got more things to worry about at the moment with regards to what's going on on the field. We've got you know we've got a promotion push to go, to crack on with, and if these things do come to light, you know, and they, and they are actually provable, and we do get charged, then then deal with them. Then otherwise, yeah. just yeah, leave it as what it is for now. Yeah, uh, yeah, fair, fair play. I mean, it's like what you've said, just said there. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll echo what you've just said there is that everything like that being a, any any business, um, uh, it's be, between the individual concerned and the employer, or like you said, the Barnes Football Club. Uh, and if she just feel that she's mistreated, which she clearly does, and she's no longer at the club, I think that's a matter for her herself and to take on through the relevant bodies. It's a, it's a private matter, and for her, she, you know, for me, she, I, I wouldn't want for her to, you know, for people's comments online to to sway any sort of decision that you know mm. it should. That's why it should have been kept private. Mm. That's why it should yeah. have been kept private. So wherever it's been leaked from, it's that's quite poor. I think that's a disappointing thing in it. Which that's leaked. really disappointing. It's personal that the private that business, isn't it? Leaked. Yeah, and stuff uh, like about the loan paperwork and stuff like that. It just just you know until it's proven or you get charges then you can make a comment on it like yeah, which we do on tight TV yeah. we always like call it out for whatever it is but on this incident in instance sorry in, incidents instance is that it's allegations it's nothing's been proven as such as in yeah. you know uh outs come out officially through this document or that documents come through the athletic which yeah. 
I'm a bit half and half with that because, like I said, we always want you to subscribe to see more, you know, new stories and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. Um, one thing that John Flatman did say, and I'll read this out and we'll move on from that. Uh, run about the uh, just try and find it in a minute. Run about the people involved in the football club. I've just been on about it as well, uh, Ryan. 40% of board members are female, 33% of workforce are female, you know, significant investments. And like I said, we've got a women's team. Yeah. You know, so again, we, I know there's a lot of things going off on the end. There's like female-led operations, box office and stuff like that behind the scenes. So again, I'm very, very surprised. We've got Vicky Stevens as well, um, you know, uh, Ed Physio at Barnsley Football Club. So again, a lot of things behind the scenes, but we don't, we're not privy to. And again, until... Out comes that officially, Ben. For me, to sell, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, I think, I think we're very, we're very, we're, we're a very diverse football club. And look, if you just look at the investment we've put into the women's football team this year, mm. um, and, and and look and look what it's doing for them. They're doing absolutely amazing, aren't they? They're doing they're doing so well, um, flying at the top of the league at the moment. Um, and like I said, we've got we've got. We're a very diverse football club, so I think this sexual discrimination thing be, uh, against a woman uh, because a woman, I, thought, I don't, I don't, uh, being a woman in football, I don't think that's correct. To be I honest, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, again, I could, could be wrong, but I don't. You know, if you look at who we've got on the board members, about the number of staff that we've got, like and, and, and women in senior positions, like you said about the physio, and then the investment that we're putting the, into the women's team, to and, and how much that's, uh, how much of a positive um, effect that's had on them. I think, I think we need to move away from that and just yeah. it, leave it as a it's an employee employer um sure. grievance and let them deal with it and i don't think we need to start going down you know sexual discrimination route and stuff like that yeah let, let, let the individual and the you know yeah let the them deal with it and like yeah. and deal with that and then what will come out and wash regards other things then we can comment on yeah. it but at this point and we shouldn't get time... to know about what the outcome is either neil we shouldn't yeah. get to know what the outcome exactly. is between, between her and between yeah. eleanor and the football club because it's a private matter yeah let them let, let be dealt with so back to on the field matters uh, people will be pleased to know uh late in audience ryan uh yeah for me they start off a bit uh a bit unsure i mean the, you know but Wellens a decent manager and they're up in ninth at the minute on 45 points. Um, I like Leighton Orient. I like the style. I like how they set them up. I think they're a very well-run side by Wellens. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking at the form here. One, 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 draw and one, one, one. So again, not, yeah, not a bad, not a bad uh, beat that, mate, is it? No, the, the last the last defeat, the 23rd of uh, December, mm. um, which, was a, which was away at Bolton, which was a tight game at 3-2. Um, and, and they've gone eight unbeaten, and they've won six of those, mate. Included yeah. wins at po away at Pompey three 0 mm. beating Bolton at home. You know they've had some really good. They're on a good run of form, and like this, like we said, when we come up against them, when we played it away, mate, they're a good side. Yeah, they're very, yeah. very well organised. He's a really good coach. This is going to be a tough game. They're pushing. Mm. They're going for playoffs, mate. They they've got the playoffs set in their side, and why and why not? You know, why not? They're, they're playing really well at the moment. They're, they're really well placed. There's plenty of time. They'll be wanting to set points off. I mean, football clubs always want to take points off you. But there's a lot more incentive for them to take those points tomorrow because it, it, it closes the gap on the on the playoff. Yeah, you know, it the does. The playoffs and them. So, tough game tomorrow, mate. Tough game. I mean, un under Wellings, I mean, I know we start off at the beginning of the season but we're a bit uh, ropey, but, you know, you find a defeat kind of thing. But now he's got him settled and he's got him playing that kind of brand of football. They are they're a tricky opposition, Leighton Orient. And yeah, people absolutely. say, Oh, yeah, Leighton Orient. And, but when you when you watch how we play, I've watched a few highlights and stuff like that. Tell you what, they're gonna give us a game tomorrow. Um absolutely. For me, absolutely. I think it's gonna be a lot closer than what a lot of people think. I've already seen some at Scrub predictions saying, Oh, we'll we'll beat a three and oh and thinking, do you know on, what? Based on what? Based it's, on yeah, what? <laughs> Our own form. We need to vastly improve on that. Yeah, you know they've they've uh, they're a good side, mate. If if we beat them tomorrow, um, and I think we can if we if we play as game. We, we I think we can beat anyone in this league when when we play as game. You know, if we play anything like we did against Bolton last week, um, mm. we, we we can we can beat anyone in this league. But um, they're a tricky customer, mate. And if we're slightly yeah. off, like we have been at home 
getting off to slow starts at home, yeah. almost like a rabbit caught in the headlights in you know at the start of the game, like against against Carlisle and Exeter, where we've just been absolutely garbage in the first half. You know, it, it could well be a situation where uh, similar to like Exeter, where games just a bit it's a bit too much of a stretch by half time. So we mm-hmm. absolutely have to be on our game tomorrow, mate, to get anything out of that game. Um, would, um, would you be making any changes for for game for Barnsley? Probably not. No, I don't think well, so. Oh, early decent. I know, know they're there. about McCart coming, but if if Donovan Pines is fit, if Donovan Pines is fit, uh, fit enough to play, then play him at right centre back and push Williams out to right wing back. He played otherwise, in. Um, otherwise, I'd probably leave it. He played in a uh, a game, didn't he? I think he, he did was. an hour at twenty ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah twenty ones, wasn't it? Yeah. So, somebody else did as well. Oh, what, it was somebody else out of the first team. That uh, Connor well. Grant. He, he, Grant, he, yeah, thank you. yeah, he, he yeah. had a he had a, st- a spell as well. So they both had sixty minutes, didn't they? In twenty mm. ones earlier on in the week. So um, whether Pines is fit enough to start, um, I'm hoping You're so. On bench, I feel like last, first team last week and one on bench. So that yeah. really, so that's uh, maybe that only it's maybe only change I'd make because obviously we want we want Kane Phillips and uh, and uh, and uh, Luca in midfield and then mm. McAtee and Cole up top. So no, yeah. that's that's probably only defense, the only change I'd make, mate. More or less, picks it some Ben apart, and like you just said, be any injuries, which I, I don't think there is. Uh, not to be mentioned about injuries and that. No, like, no, because Kane, Kane went back off, didn't he? After I think because he, he'd done mm. his hamstring, hadn't he? And then it obviously he must have mm. felt it a bit. Um, and, and they took him off against Bolton, which was a shame because he was playing. He was playing brilliant against Bolton. He were really good. Yeah. Um, so yeah. hopefully he's he's back up to speed for tomorrow. Yeah, I think. I think we definitely miss Luca uh, in next to game compared to Bolton because watching Massive Bolton way. game, like you said, B, I don't think any player had a, had a bad game. To, if I'm being honest, uh, against Bolton, we all did a, a great team effort. Yeah, I just think that at home we need to stamp his authority on this game against Leighton Orient and start. And we don't need to be starting like we did against Exeter because yeah, it was woeful that mate. I don't want a reactionary performance again, mate. Where it's where where mm. we do play well in second half, we play brilliant, but it's basically a reaction to the fact that we were so poor in first half. I don't yeah. want that. I just want us to turn up and play like that anyway. Yeah, you know that's true. String string ninety minutes together, like we did against Bolton. Um, mm. You know, and hopefully the fact that I've said it before, mate. Like where I think that when we play good sides that play nice football, it lends itself to our to our style of football. We seem to struggle against the sides that sit back and don't seem to be able to unlock that problem at the moment. We get sides just sit back and slow us down. Mm. But, you know, Leighton Orient are a good, really good footballing team, as Bolton were last week, and it lends itself to, you know, styles make games, don't they? So I'm hoping that lends itself to, to our, to you know, for our lads to express themselves a bit, you know, a bit better with a, a, a style of football that suits them. Yeah, I think it'd be a decent game of football, like you've just said, Beer. I agree with that. So, yeah. not into the football inside, and I think we'd, it's more suited to us like against Bolton. Uh, no disrespect, but when you're playing someone like Fleetwood and that, it, 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 you know, they kind of make it more awkward for you to break down. Yeah. And I think late and Orient game, I think, will be a lot better pleasing on eye kind of thing, or being well for bounds even more so. Um, but I'm going, you know, for a, for a decent... A decent performance. I think we need to start set off and, like you said, from the first uh, minute to not like be reactive to all. Score prediction. Um, I think it's going to be a close game, but I can't. I'd love it to be a, a clean sheet for Barnsley, but I'd be very, very undoubtful about that. I'm going to go Barnsley two one win, uh, Ryan. So I don't know what you're going to go for, mate. I was going to go for the same, Neil. I don't. I think. Yeah. It, I think. It, I think it'll be really close. I think. I think we'll probably concede just because they're a really good side. Yeah. I'd love it. Like I said, I'd love a clean sheet. I really would. Um, but I think. I think we'll probably. I think we'll probably concede, mate. Um, and, and but I, I think we've got enough to go and win the game if we're playing it as best. Yeah. If we're playing it as best, but if we play out like we did against Exeter and Carlisle at home, I think. I think Leighton Orient will, 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 will beat us. If I'm being honest. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna go same for you, Neil. Two two one win. Two one win. Uh, people, what's been watching? I appreciate it. I appreciate all the Patreon uh, members as well. Uh, it's Bob this up. Uh, because there has been some new uh, people. What's I'm gonna update all the the page as well, like uh, Patreon members and uh, there's Andy Win Winard in Australia. 
Appreciate it. Oh, nice. you know, all, the, all the way Thanks, back. Man.